This is a brief introduction to the Mark Scott Leadership for Life Award, which is open to people in six years to take part from participating schools across the Central Belt. This time of year, it's time for people to apply for a funded place, and that is why I'm making this presentation to you. I'm sorry I'm not doing it in person. Overall, it only involves a little bit of time each week initially, and a couple of weekends, which will be next year, um, and that's all you need to needing to commit um, that and a few tasks that you and your teammates will agree on. And we think, we're pretty sure that a reward to the participants for you guys are well worth what's asked of you. Hello and welcome to the Broom Cupboard. I'm Steve and I work for the Mark Scott Leadership for Life Award and the Outward Bound Trust. Um, and I'm here, unfortunately not in person, but I'm here to, um, to kick off a wee presentation about the Mark Scott Leadership for Life Award, which is a, an opportunity open to all six years. So please uh, watch the video. If you've got any questions, my contact details are at the end. We'd really like to get some application from your school um, because we want you to get involved uh, and we think we've got something that's really useful for you and really beneficial for you and your community. So I won't hold you up any longer. Let's get cracking. So we split the presentation into these sections. I'm basically going to briefly in introduce you to the award in 2020, which is different to what it has been, but the outcomes are the same. We've spent a lot of time and effort in creating or recreating the award in a way that we can deliver what we've always delivered. So we've got a lot of experience in doing that. Um, when we say we can do things, we know that we can because we've evidenced that as well. Come the end of this, if you still need more information, that's absolutely fine. Contact details are on the website, but also my email address is at the end as well. Um, and you're welcome to email me to ask questions. So the first section, the award background. Um, basically, it's in two parts, participant development and community action. So participant development, we'll spend a little bit more time on community action. Uh, just briefly, it's a community project. It's uh, you and your teammates and people you've trained with um, creating something for your community. So we'll need you to look into your community um, and see if you can find something that you can do for your community. Um, there will be development time and creating that project. Uh, and ultimately, when you deliver it, it's only to take two to maybe three days um, to deliver so it's relatively small but we, it's amazing what you can do with a small amount of time and that's what we want you to do to surprise your community to do something for community to surprise yourselves and give you something to be proud of as well so those are the, the two halves of the award it's really important for us uh, that the uh, that you understand the background of the award so please have a read of this slide uh, and this will inform you about the background of the award and therefore um, why we have these two parts and um, what we're trying to achieve and why we're doing it. So in context, the ability to develop confidence in the face of the unknown, whether it be whether you want to go after where you're going to go after school or even around what exams will look like, is really, really important. Um, the, the, what we can offer you is, uh, amongst other things, are skills that are going to help you cope in the current climate um, and in your final year at school. There's really, really important in there as well. You're going to uh, make new friends as well, and they will help you through all that. Um, we've already talked about the community project a little bit and that's a vehicle for you get to get where you want to go next as well but it's not all about what happens next it's also about now so some of the models that we'll use and some of the tools that we'll develop with you um, you can use them to make more efficient use of your time while you're in sixth year which will either help you de-stress with studying perhaps uh, make better use of your time maybe even give you more time because you use it more efficiently There's a wee list of some of the outcomes that you might be interested in. So we do some psychological models. Uh, we've already talked about time management, developing, uh, developing new friendships, great references for personal statements, doing something for your community. Um, we'll run through a reflective process that helps you learn about yourself and how you work with other people. And fundamentally, we'll make it as much fun and as much challenge as we possibly can. 
because that's when we are at our best. It's when we're challenged. It's a little bit different this year. If you've heard about it previously, if you know someone that's done it and they've talked about it, then we have to run it differently because we're in a different environment at the moment. But the outcomes are the same and many of the activities are identical to what we've done. In many ways, we're hoping that this is even going to be better than previous Leadership for Life experiences. So we've restructured it to fit in with the current circumstances uh, and this is it and you move through the, the coloured lozenges through the centre. What's really worth pointing out at this stage though is that it starts, well, it started in August and goes through to April. Um, we are mindful of the amount of time that you've got and we're going to only use a little bit of your own time and it is run in your own time, this is not a school event. Um, so these things will happen in your own time, but a little bit of drip feeding through time. So it's not taking up loads of your time. You'll still need to be committed to taking part and committed to continue, uh, but um, it's not going to take over your lives. So let's give you a little bit of detail, not too much, but a little bit more detail on each of these elements as we move through. Before I do that, just to bear in mind that the introduction and training and team development will overlap a little bit and obviously the community project and social and confidence elements overlap completely. And that's because we need to be flexible about around you and your needs, the school year and obviously also the changes in things that may happen um, as, uh, as the year goes on. So we're in recruitment and application. Um, I will repeat the website address and my email address later on as well for you. So that's where we are right now. Moving very swiftly into the introduction and training. Um, this will be a mixture of online and face-to-face -face elements of training um, in the models, both the business and psychological models that we're going to be using and uh, introducing to you. You can then go off and use them straight away to understand the people around you and yourself and your reactions. Um, at this stage, I'll just say that we are working as a youth work organisation, so we're following government guidelines for your safety on youth work, uh, and we'll stick to that around social distancing and where we do things and how we do things. We're not forcing people to take part in the face-to-face -face stuff, but it does reduce the outcomes uh, because a lot of our outcomes are social outcomes. But if it, ultimately you can't or don't want to take part face-to-face -face, but want to continue to take part, that's not going to be a problem for us. You'll then move into the team development phase, which is about preparing your team, your group of individuals you've been training in, turning into, into a team, people that understand and trust each other so that they can then develop a community project that you can all take part in. Um, you can challenge yourselves and you can also be, feel pride in what you've managed to achieve as well. So you can show it off at interview. And then into that community project, I've said before, two to three days of uh, delivering something that benefits your community. Don't make it really easy. If it's really easy, it's not really worthwhile and you don't get so much pride from it. So you're going to find us as your project coordinators trying to encourage you to do things that are going to be a little bit more tricky. So you get more pride out of it and it's a, it's a better thing to show off to people about how good you are. Uh, and that's really going to be useful to set yourself apart from other people at the end of the year. But let's face it, it's going to be good fun and a greater sense of pride if it's a little bit more tricky. You'll be supported all the way through this by your project coordinator as well and we'll go through the whole experience with you. That's the community project. And the social and confidence elements, um, really, really important for us, but the vaguest area that we are. The government regula regulations at the moment uh, really limit what we can do for you. We want to deliver this as best as we possibly can. So we've put it off until next year. This will be in the spring next year. But we're aware that local uh, regulations may, ch may change and national, government, uh, national regulations may change. So we are going to make these uh, as flexible as possible. So they may be a single day. It may be single days where you go home at the end of, end of the day. Uh, it may be a two day expedition. It may be a three day expedition or even a res three day residential experience. We don't know yet. We're planning for all of those. And for each team, we'll be mindful of the needs of the area uh, that people come from and the individuals within it as well when we decide on when these are run and how they're run as well. But the idea for you to have um, a, an adventurous challenge that you take part in with your team um, and you achieve something that surprises you is really, really important to us and really important to the outcomes as well. So we're going to try. 
And finally, the completion of learning will look at all the experiences you've had and pull out as much as possible what you've learned about yourself, about working successfully with other, other people. And we'll take all of that and then look at the future with you um, on a one-to-one -one basis and in teams so we can then look at action planning, how you can move forward and continue to develop. Um, and that's really, really vital and an important part of an Outward Bound course. At this stage, there may be some, uh, some questions you've got. The biggest question that people uh, have are its level of support. So we'll be there with you all the way through and also about finances. So just put it straight out there. It's going to cost you £30 to take part because it's funded. Because instead of £30, the actual the award, your participa participation as an individual costs around £1,400. And the rest of it is funded for you. So you don't need to find that money at all. I mean, what you do need to do is find the, the commitment to take part and, and continue through the award. And that's what we're asking of you. But ultimately, it's an investment in yourself. So we think it's a simple and easy bargain. So just to round things off, there's a few statements about who this best suits and who we can both most help uh, and, and best help um, for, move forward. So have a read of this. Maybe some or one of these statements actually you recognize that I mean, you don't need to tell the people around you. But if any of these strike a note, these are good reasons why you should take part in the award and why you should apply. So here we are at the, at the end. Um, hopefully there was enough information there for you to, to make a decision. If not, um, the website is available there, MSLFLA, that's Mark Scott Leadership for Life Award.org. Um, that's got lots more information about what we're doing uh, and much more information about what will be expected of you. But crucially, it's also the place where you follow the link to the application form as well and make a short application. Don't worry about the application form, you just need to be honest and bear in mind what was in the previous slide. Just get in there and fill it in if you're interested. And if you're feeling anxious and that might hold you back, then my email address is there as well. So just get in touch with us um, and ask that question. What's that thing that's maybe holding you back? And you may find if you give us a chance, we can uh, find a way of relieving that anxiety and helping you take part. And we really want to. So please guys, do do that as soon as possible because you're busy people and you'll forget soon enough and then it'll be too late because we need to get started. So if you're interested, we've got a question, get in touch or get applying as soon as you possibly can. And that only leaves me to say thank you very much for sitting through the presentation and to say sorry that we couldn't come. I, I know myself and my colleagues, the other project coordinators would have much preferred to have come and spoken to you in person, but it's just not possible right now. Uh, but we are looking forward to receiving your applications, getting in touch with you uh, and forming those teams so we can get started uh, and start with those community projects. So thanks again, everybody, and best of luck with your sixth year. And we hope you have a good year. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>